Entertainment Weekly last week unrolled all of its uh, exclusive content about the movie. Ginormous batch of articles. Anthony Bresnikan really? is the guy who does this, and he's done this for Rogue One. He's done this for uh, Force Awakens as well, I believe. And just the man did really well of not having – you don't have to stretch to talk about this movie for a week. There were so many different angles to attack. Uh, with the solo movie, and so we got a series of photos. I believe there were nine photos that we got uh, through this. But uh, I, I say, like, we just go ahead and, and dive on in, and we'll just start with that first article. And what I loved about, and David, I, I think you have the quote pulled up, but they're talking about Han Solo and the approach to Solo in this movie, mm-hmm. and it's the fact that this guy, no matter how hard he tries to not be a part of the great, the higher system that he's out for himself. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, the the guy has a heart. David, do you have that quote? Try as he might to live outside the law, to care about nothing, to embody his loner name, he finds himself inexorably pushed and pulled by the tractor beam of his own decency. No, I believe that is a <clears throat> Anthony line that he wrote. I don't think that's accredited to anybody. No. Um, but I, I, I think that's great insight and, you know, it's of course accompanied by a really cool cover. I, the cover, which, you know, we're showing right now, um, I love the brown jacket that Han's wearing. Mm-hmm. I, I love the look of, of, of Chewie. They, they just look right. You know, a joke mm-hmm. that we have is that Chewie gets younger with every sequel tr- <laughs> trilogy film, but here he actually looks like he looks like he, uh, a younger Chewie. Really that sure. looks good. Mm-hmm. I, I like kind of like the swagger that we're kind of seeing with Alden Ehrenreich's approach to Solo, it, it, it feels right. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this translates. And of course, I mentioned those nine other photos. Um, Jesse, I think we're getting a Western movie. And I think that was somewhat um, suggested through the teaser trailer. Uh, mm-hmm. But also when you go through this story too, you know, Kathleen Kennedy in a later quote describes this as a, glun- uh, you know, he's a gunslinger, you know, he's mm-hmm. an outlaw in a way. What do you think about getting a Western vibe uh, Star Wars movie because that's a little different. Uh, no, I, I'm excited about that because I mean, uh, westerns. I mean, you'd be surprised how much actually influenced the original trilogy. So to see some of those elements come come back into play. Um, I mean, Boba Fett, for example. I mean, you're gonna laugh and you go, oh, Boba Fett, but the sh- his shoulder cape is actually a nod towards Clint Eastwood. Yep. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So um, and actually. They snuck it into Empire. You hear the boot spurs. Those are actual boot spurs. Boba, hmm. there's no spurs uh, or anything on, uh, you hmm. know. So I mean, it's kind of like an Easter egg thing there. But I mean, uh, yeah, westerns have it did influence the original trilogy. So to see um, that kind of come back into play here, and we especially see that in the in the trailer that we got, where we see him, you know. Prepping the blaster and everything to you know for what looks to be like a basically a at dawn kind right. of you know. Duel. I'm really into it because I thought what did, went what so well for Rogue One is they went ahead and they made it a genre type film. It's a war movie. Yeah, you know, it's a war movie and it paid off. And so I'm looking forward to seeing a Western type Star Wars movie because I think it makes sense in that galaxy mm-hmm. where there are outlaws i mean it kind yeah. of is mm-hmm. the wild west when i think of the outer rim i've kind of always associated with the out you know with the wild west and you're exactly right that frame where he's unbuckling you know you're gonna have a standoff in this yeah. movie and it's gonna be yeah. great um you know the thing that is so um interesting in that story though is you know we talk about this is a ron howard directed film a lawrence kasdan script Visually now, we've seen the trailer. Like You're thinking, this is going to be one heck of an adventure. But the one question that has been, and it was addressed in this opening article of this weekly series of, of posts, what is Alden Ehrenreich's acting ability, and is it going to impede the success of this movie? Financially, we already know that this movie has to make a lot of money just to break even because they essentially made two movies. Okay, that that that's the, that's the climate in, that we're in. So um, we are going to touch on Alden's uh, acting in, in just a couple of minutes. But David, was there anything that you wanted to address before we moved on? Yeah, Kathleen calls this a heist movie, mm-hmm. which kind of caught my attention because I I do enjoy a good heist movie. You got like Die Hard, the Ocean's Eleven movies, um, uh, Mission Impossible's. So if this is more of a heist movie, that really captures my attention because that's something we haven't really seen in this universe yet. No, I, I'm down with you, and it kind of goes with the the Western theme that I was talking about. Uh, just well, a again, we, ago. we we get it in the trailer. Beckett is like, "How do you feel about like 
you know, a job. Like he's basically pitching a job in the trailer kind of thing. We need so. a crew. What do you think about seeing a fully manned Millennium Falcon? We kind of talked about this last oh, week, man. but the idea of seeing like yeah. a full crew, like six, seven, eight, nine people operating every gun on the Millennium Falcon, a full cockpit, you know, what is going like? I want to see how a Millennium Falcon with the appropriate care. <laughs> how it's actually supposed to work. How it's supposed to work. Because I don't think it was the biggest hunk of junk in the galaxy. Clearly from the, the set images that we got. Oh my God. Did you see the paneling that was inside that Falcon before he stripped it all? Ooh. Oh God. It's so nice. I'm, I, I actually might splurge on the Lego set. Well, I, might do, I might do it. EW talks about that at length in the interview with Donald Glover. Let's do the interview first with Alden, though. Sure. Because in there, we get uh, a little behind-the-scenes talk about how he got some help with Harrison Ford. Before we move on, there's one other thing in the, the first article that we didn't cover. What? And that was uh, they allude that Woody Harrelson's character, which we've been taught is kind of a, a mentor. mentor Beckett, yeah. They say that he has to go up against him. So is he going to flip sides? Is he going to become more of an antagonist? Um, he Ooh. says uh, The article says that uh, Han will have to face off against... Uh, Woody Harrelson's character and the crime br- boss Dryden Voss. Yeah, see, Dryden so Voss is—I get... think that metal ma- is the masked mm-hmm. guy with the feathers, and he has all of his goonies. So, are we getting a character where Han is going to have to like learn from him and then flip it, and then have to, you know, abandon him? And it's probably a situation where this Becca guy tries to screw over Han, and yeah, it well, makes him bitter. Which I, is completely possible in the Outer Rim Territory. So. Yeah, it would make sense. It would fit. All right, let's go ahead and talk right. about that Alden Ehrenreich interview that we mentioned ago. Alden Ehrenreich was interviewed by Anthony Bresnikin, and a tremendous article. Each one of these articles top-notch. They really are. And great insights and really gets you excited for these movies. Uh, I think what I'm interested in so much is just the cult of, cult of, cultivizing this character, right? So um, we know that he had a, a, a couple talks with Harrison Ford – <laughs> about the character Han Solo, and not just like, well, kid, you know, when someone talks to you, this is how you have to look at them, but like the origins, like those initial conversations with George. Mm-hmm. How cool is that, that Harrison, who has kind of perso- personified himself as a curmudgeon, wanting nothing to do, he was quoted at Star Wars Celebration saying he wanted nothing to do with the Han Solo movie. This guy sat down and took time to talk with Alden Ehrenreich about, you know, what this character has gone through, why he does the things that he does. Do you think he did it of his own accord, or do you think Disney like offered him a shit ton of money? I think I mean, both are besi- possible. Besides paying for what do you th- what do you think, Jesse? Do you think it's possible? I, I want to think that potentially. I mean, it could be a, probably a combination of both um, kind of thing, but at the same time, I mean, Harrison is known for some of his you know his other work and everything like outside of film. You know, he's he's flown, I think, you know, helicopters for, like, rescue and stuff like that, if I uh, recall. Small airplanes and crashed a few of them. Yeah. You, On a golf course. <laughs> you, know, you get my point. I mean, he does take part in, you know, charitable events. I, I, the thing is, is, yes, he comes off as kind of a cranky, gruff guy. Oh, okay. I was trying that's to what I, That's where I'm going with I this. Was like, I was like, man, where are you going with this? Um, so I think, I mean, yeah, maybe he did get some pay to, you know, step onto the set for pointers, but I think, you know... I don't see Harrison as being somebody who wants to see, you know, a young actor, you know, fail. You know, I mean, this is Han Solo is an American icon. I would agree with that. I think what it comes down to is the fact that we saw it in Force Awakens. We talk about it a lot is the fact that he fell in love with that character again. He had a good Mm -hmm. time on set. He enjoyed making that movie. And I think, you know what? He has that. But you know what? He has a heart. I mean, like, I, I think it's kind of funny sometimes how we do kind of think, oh, he's cranky, oh, he, he craps on Star Wars. No, he doesn't. He loves this franchise. But, you know, it's Harrison Ford, and that's how he handles it. It's how Clint Eastwood talks. You know, he's yeah. always sounding so miserable, but that man has an incredible heart. You know, and George Lucas, mm-hmm. he has an incredible heart for Star Wars. He just can't direct a Star Wars movie anymore. Well, Alden called him a very supportive and called him really cool to have lunch with. Yeah. And uh, Hani, or, uh, uh, Harrison even kind of trolled him a little bit. Um Alden says that he sat down and said, okay, go tell them I told you everything you needed to know and that you can't tell anyone what it is. That's just, that's perfect. <laughs> that's that's Harrison. And that's perfect. And we don't need to know. Let me just see it on Memorial Day in 2018. The only input he gave him was how to do the Harrison Ford uh, oh, the finger point, point. Finger point. Oh my gosh. He's going <laughs> to give him pointers on the point. That's <laughs> I, uh, No, I think it's really great. And it kind of reminded me of that photo that leaked very early on. I don't know if it leaked, but that photo of Donald Glover with Billy D. Williams in that mm-hmm. restaurant, they're in that booth and they're kind of talking mm-hmm. about the Lando character. Uh, it kind of reminds me of that. Here's my thing. We know that Han, that not Han, we know Harrison Ford was on set. 
Is this the acting coach that we've probably been hearing about for the last several months? Everyone's hitting the, the, the panic button because all the Aaron Reich's acting is suspect. Well, maybe it wasn't suspect. Maybe he had an acting coach on set because it was freaking Harrison Ford. What do you think, Jesse? I, I the thing is, is again, Han Solo is is an iconic movie character. Like you, you don't want to mess this up, you know. So I mean, if I feel like, yeah, you got to have Harrison Ford there, to right? But get- are you concerned any longer if the acting coach is just Harrison Ford there, like giving guidance? This is completely different from an acting coach being like, listen, when you when you want to feel the emotion of sadness, you need a frown. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference yeah. there. Uh, this side. It is a little bit more confident building kind of thing. I would, at this point. I would you hope know, so. Like, was it Howard that brought in um, the acting coach? No, I. Or was the, it Lord Miller? I think it was Lord Miller, Kathleen Kennedy, like a, a group thing, because that rumor was coming out before Ron Howard took over. Well, I was curious. So I just pulled up uh, Harrison Ford's IMDb, mm-hmm. and last year the only movie he had come out was Blade Runner. Yes, which was October. October time frame. And it was a great movie. But they would have still been finishing filming back in January, February, March, April when Lord Miller would have still been on, on the film. Because they wouldn't have hit post-production until like six months before the movie came out. Well, Lord and Miller were on it from January until about late April, May. Mm-hmm. And then and Howard came on. That's when I would have suspected that Blade Runner would still be filming the last bit of their shot. Right. So he wouldn't be able to get over to a set to do some solo coaching. It could have been in the in the works, you know, and then he came over when Ron, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things where I'm, ex- I am happy that he at least took the time to, you know, sit down, um, and give pointers and everything to make sure that the, the essence of this character, um, was at least, uh, you know, effectively captured at a younger age. David, let's go ahead and jump down to the next uh, article that we have. It's the Lando article. It's Lando Donald article. Glover. Mm-hmm. David's really excited about it because I think your favorite part might be what Donald Glover does with Lando Calrissian. Oh, absolutely movie. not. Really? No. I thought you were all about it a couple of weeks ago. No. So now, okay, so you read the so, article. So for starters, Lando is not my favorite character. Okay. And and I know a lot of people have a love for Lando, but I, I think he's two-timing. I think he's a backstabbing friend. And I just I never latched on to him as a kid when I watched these movies. I don't identify with him. He's to me he's more of like an antagonist or a a neutral antagonist than he is a hero. So I'm I'm not an overly big fan of the Lando character. Donald Glover, I'll be honest, I've only seen him in Spider Man Homecoming. Now I know he's done a whole bunch of different things with music. And wasn't he on SNL a couple times? Was he hosting or was he? Well, yeah, but he's on a, uh, that Atlanta sh- the yeah, Atlanta show. Never seen it. Uh, he's incredible. He's the childish so, Gambino. The guy can rap. He did stand up. The guy is m- so, one of the m- right. top five most so, talented actors. So as I've been learning more about Donald Glover by doing this podcast and doing my research, it sounds like he's an outrageously talented individual. But my only experience with him is watching his hand get webbed to a trunk lid and complaining about his ice cream to uh, uh, Tom Holland. Um, so I'm told that I should be really excited for this character, but I, I don't know the actor very well, and I've never been very fond of the uh, the character. Mm-hmm. So I'm not trashing Lando. I'm just not excited for Lando, but I do want to see what Donald Glover is going to bring to this character because of the reputation he's bringing with him. Now, what I like about what's in this article, and it kind of piggybacks off of what David said, is inside the article, you know, he's asked, you know, what did you learn from Billy D. Williams that was depicted in that photo? And he's talking about how... Um, you know, what do I do? And hmm. Billy D would say things like, well, just be charming. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he's like, well, I, I can try and do that. And he's like, don't be eccentric, just... but have an eclectic taste. You know, he's a little sophisticated, which, yeah, that's that's kind of Lando. He's a charmer. Yeah. He's kind of fancy. He's, <laughs> he's, he's a smooth talker. You oh, know, yeah. he's got, you know, I mean, he's like the, you know, third person we see with a cape mm-hmm. kind of thing. You know, mm-hmm. like, I mean, just look at him on Cloud City kind of thing. Um as far as the character Lando as a whole goes, um, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of with David. I mean, to me, you know, when he's first introduced, he's more of like a side character, and then he kind of takes on a more important role um, with in Return of the Jedi and everything. Um, so the thing is, is I am actually kind of interested in that story arc potentially being presented here is what kind of friendship does Han and Lando actually have? Are we actually going to see that be kind of a, 
a re- kind of a more of like an acquaintance kind of thing. Like, at what point does Han get the Falcon? You know, is actually the new owner. Um, you know, what 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 causes this to kind of? Because it seems like they part ways. Obviously, mm-hmm. they haven't seen each other in years, kind of thing. Oh, I'd agree with but, that. You know, so well. Now you read the article. You know, the part where he's talking about how even. How much, like how much he loves the Millennium Falcon. I thought this was really cool, David. Um, where he's talking about how the Millennium Falcon is so nice under Lando's care that when they would end scene and he, they'd be like, you know, you can go over there. He's like, I'm just going to go in Lando's suite because it was that comfortable. He talks about how he would go and, and read books and such. I'm really excited about how I want to see what the Millennium Falcon does with Lando. How good is he with the Falcon? Like, is Han the better pilot with a Falcon or is Lando? And then, like, yeah, he took care of that thing so much that ship, again, was not the biggest hunk of junk in the galaxy during that time. So I'm excited to see Lando existing Lando existing on the Falcon. And also, the Falcon, through the trailer and through these articles, is becoming, again, a character of its own. And, uh, I mean, for us, it's kind of a nostalgic beat, right? Well, I, I actually thought, saw a really interesting uh, meme picture, and it was... Uh Chewie had just taken a shower and he's soaking wet. And then the next picture is him like shaking all the water off like a dog. And that's how, <laughs> you know, it went from sparkly to, to dirty kind of thing. But <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I get what you're saying. Cause like, yeah, Lando seems to be kind of, he's more like, he's a scoundrel, mm-hmm. but I don't think he's a smuggler in that sense. I think he's, he's more about one of those like types where, you know, let's make a, a business deal kind of thing here yeah it's a shady business deal and that's how he makes his money mm-hmm. where you know and maybe that's kind of the difference between the two characters yeah. there is uh lando's kind of a little i don't want to say that han isn't intelligent you know he's intelligent he's like street smart intelligent but like han is more like businessman you know shady corporate mm-hmm. you know oh lando for sure you know han gets by on street smart and common sense that's what he does yeah now also in the story we can get we get confirmed that lando is playing sabak uh, is there anything, David, that we haven't discussed, do you think, in this article before we need to move uh, on? In this article? I mean, I think we pretty much wrapped it up. We had that cool article. Again, he, he talks about the puppeteers a little bit in here. Oh, how there was like a language barrier, right? Um, yeah. One of the, speak English. When they're playing the card game, Sabak, uh, the alien he's playing is a two-headed puppet that doesn't speak uh, English or common or whatever the... See, I think that would be such a fun, is. challenging aspect of being in a Star Wars movie because you're having to like interact with aliens they aren't going to speak english they're not going to speak spanish or like a human language it's i think that would be he, fascinating he did say there's some really good outtakes from the the, the game sabak that he's playing with the i hope they put the, you put the like on like yeah. a deleted scene section you know mm-hmm. like i'd love to hear you know mm-hmm. and then here's that. my thing is in eu jesse was sabak ever explained do we know kind of i, I mean i kind of i know it's been referenced um i th- if I remember correctly, is, that's how Lando loses. No, 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 no. I know that. I know that. I'm <laughs> yeah. saying, do the rules of Sabacc ever get explained? Like, is it like Magic the Gathering where I have to put mana on the table? Or is it more like, you know, I just have like a hand and it's a chan- you know, it's it's a numbers game? I've always kind of looked at it a little bit. Actually, you know. So we don't know it's if it's on, been explained. Yeah. It's, it's, like it's, on, it's on uh, uh, Wikipedia. Okay, wonderful. As I'm trying to read. Uh, does, it, does it reference the rules, though? Or it just talks about how it's the game that they played? Because I don't think that I've ever seen rules for the game. What would be interesting yeah, to me yeah, is, it is. Bo- so um, it's comprised of face cards, including the idiot, the queen, the evil one, and the star. And then okay. there's four suits of fourteen cards. So that makes it a bigger deck than our standard fifty-two. Uh, the Sabak player's goal is to win the pot by collecting a hand of cards that totaled positive or negative twenty-three. Um, the hand could only be beaten by a rare and beatable hand called the Idiot's Array. Um, so it gives kind of us sounds some like of a it. mixture of poker and blackjack. Then there's Carillion Spike version of it, which uses a pair of six sided dice, which maybe that's what uh, Han has. Um, oh, it says that's where he won the Millennium Falcon was a game of Carillion Spike Sabak, Sabak. So Han kept the golden dice used to win that game. So I think this would be like a really good reference for what we might see played in the movie but i what's the source on all this stuff because what i would be kind of curious about is if the source material is eu stuff i wonder if they Um, 
use this as an influence. It's not a big deal. It's not something to get hung up on. But if you wanted to know what Sabak is, more details about the game, you just got there's, it. And again, if you want to go back on it, you can find it on Wikipedia. And there's a variety of different sources. Uh, Star Wars Rebels has some references to it. Uh, Chewbacca comic from a certain point of view uh, novel that came out last November. Right. Star Wars Rebels magazine, the Visual Dictionary, uh, a couple of the video games, uh, Star Wars Insider number 158. Okay, so like, there's like a lot of yeah, resources so out there for you to go check that mm-hmm. out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's really cool. Because again, um, this is one of those things where you always heard the game reference, but you really didn't know quite what it meant. So if you want that, go check it out. Let's go ahead and jump to the next article, though, um, since we've already reached the bottom of the Lando article. We're talking yeah. about uh, Amelia Quira. Clark. Yeah, Quira. Kira? Kira. 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 Q-I apostrophe R-A is Amelia Clark's character, and... What we're trying to figure out leading into these articles is, is she a love interest? Is she a politician? Is she some kind of royalty? It um, sounds like she's a combination of the first two. Okay. So reading the article, it sounds like Kira and Han have known each other for a long time. Um, they talked to Amelia a little bit about, you know, as a strong female character, how do you kind of do it? And she talks about how she plays her role a little more trying to navigate the system where Princess Leia kind of rebelled against it. Um, but it sounds like it's more of a love interest for Han than an opponent. Which I think makes sense, right? I mean, there's no way this guy didn't have previous love interests before Leia. We know about Sana from the comic series, the main Star Wars line. Um, they had a, a, a small thing, but they were really more like smuggling pals. Um, so, it makes sense. So it, go, it goes into more depth as I'm getting down to the bottom of the article. They grew up as comrades, essentially, is what Amelia Clark says. Mm-hmm. They grew up as pals, as partners in crime. There is obviously the romantic side of things, but they grew up together. They were kids together. And the beautiful thing about the Han Solo story is that it's highlighting all of the most brilliant aspects of Han Solo, the character, and characterizing those aspects and the character. Uh, she says character a lot. Um, and be, So she helps him become who he is. Which is interesting. So to. maybe that's a little bit about. I bet stop, she dies. Stop being selfish and go mm-hmm. uh, have a heart. And uh, I think there's a fair chance. I mean, that's I, how I, these movies I, yeah. tend to go. Someone usually dies. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I kind of. You know, I mean, I'm okay if I'm wrong with it, but I'm thinking maybe this character dies. Could she kinda... die? And that's what makes him bitter about life, especially when he rolls around and hears this, you know, princess needs saving. Exactly, because that's mean, like a thing, like that guys, or, or that, or some sort of betrayal, or something. Where I mean, it's like, oh, great, another royalty type. Kind she of thing, sleeps you know? with Beckett. They have to have a showdown because Beckett, you know, slept with Han's girl, and then Han has to kill him. So now it's like he lost his girl, lost his mentor. He's gonna, he's gonna steal the Falcon and, and go. That's how it's gonna go. Well, he'll win the Falcon, and then he'll go. I really, I really hope we see that scene we, where we he, just, he wins the Falcon. I think you have. I, I think everything is indicating that you will. I think we will. But let's yeah. not get too excited, right? Because we all thought we were going to see Luke Skywalker in Episode Eight slaughter like sixty stormtroopers, <laughs> and that did not happen. In fact, he slaughtered no stormtroopers. Um, anything else from Amelia Clark? Amelia because Clark. I feel bad. Um, you know, her background is Game of Thrones, but I just don't care. Like, I don't have much interest. In that character, and I'm not being sexist. I just, I don't, if she's the romantic element in this movie, that's great. I want her to have more of a role than that. I don't want her just to be arm candy. I want her to be, you know, a, a Ray or a Jyn Erso in the sense that, you know, she mm-hmm. she has her own agenda that well, she's in it for herself well, in this I, regard. I think she'll have her own agenda, but I, I definitely think in, in regards to plot and story, I think something has to happen here. So a betrayal, or her death or something. Um, that kind of because Han Solo in A New Hope is, I mean, obviously visually a very different individual that we're going to be seeing in this movie. Right. You know, so um, I mean, we're talking. This is a ten-year time gap. Right. So we got to see. Someone I read a rumor recently that they're starting to say that this is actually just five years before A New Hope. We don't have this. To- we don't have it. We don't have the time point on the timeline. Uh, th- this is true. This is but true. I would hope it's not five years before, because that puts it, what, right before Rogue One? Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not. I mean, five years before would still be a significant amount of time, but still, you know, I would want this like 10 years. I mean, I to, want like Empire in its prime. To me, five years is not enough time for Han and Lando to develop a solid enough relationship that we see them in. I don't know, that to me, to me, it feels like their relationship goes back decade or two so do you think this is gonna be a movie where we're gonna see the relationship continuing to blossom and then 
he wins the Falcon leaves and that's where it falls apart. Yeah, I don't I don't think this is where Han and Lando meet. I think they've known each other for a while. Okay. I, I that's what I would hope to see. Yeah. Although maybe we could be wrong since we know that some of this movie takes place on Krillia. So maybe not. Yeah, okay. Know. You know, I, there, there's a lot where, of speculation. Where, we'll we'll find out. Where, where was Lando born? Do we know? Um, from? Is that revealed? I know it, somewhere? but I can't remember it. Um, while you're looking up that, I'm going to go ahead and jump to the next story because I just don't, um, is there a, is did, there anything more you want to address in this article? The only thing else in the article was they talk about um, uh, Phoebe Waller Bridges uh, L337 droid. Yeah, I, I'm really excited about that because we're getting a female droid and we haven't really had a female droid. Up to this point, which I think is still stupid that we have, like, gender-assigned droids. Like, droids are droids. No, I can think of one. But, what, oh, is it the uh, Old Republic one? No. 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 It's, it's uh, 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 and the, the Protocol droid in Jabba's Palace. Nope. No. no, which one? An attack of clones, the diner. Oh, my oh. gosh. That stupid thing at Rex at uh, Dexter's diner. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Someone here to see you, Dex. Oh, man. That was also, like, the worst <laughs> shoehorned reference to American graffiti that Lucas did with running. I, I, I know. I love George. I, I know, love you, George. But, but that was rough. That was rough. Um, okay. Um, she, she's supposed to be, like, a self-improving droid. So she's going to be, like, every time she wanders around, she'll pick up something and, like, attach it to her. She kind of looks like RoboCop. Did you not get those vibes when you first saw the image bit. of the droid? I mean, it's a little RoboCop, which I don't have a problem with, but well, that's the, what I the thought The head kind of kinda reminds you of that... Um, the helmet. Yeah, the uh, android thing from uh, Power Rangers, though. Okay, oh, I can uh, roll with that. Alpha 5? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can roll with that. I can roll with that. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing that droid and how that's executed. It looks... Mm-hmm. So she is Lando's co-pilot, is essentially what I'm there to understand, because that's uh, a, the shot we get. Co- she's Lando's droid, not necessarily co-pilot. Um, but she goes around assembling and improving herself with scraps of other droids. That's kind of cool. So maybe this means that several times we'll see her looking a little different. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. She's going to find um, a scrap of K2 and just... David, put a little bit more excitement in your voice because we're still talking about Han Solo. We're talking about the rogues of Solo, a Star Wars story, and Jesse. You know, you're a Mandalorian loyalist. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Mandalorians can be good in nature and they can also be greedy. But what are you thinking about when we think about the rogues of the solo movie. What has you most excited after reading this article? I just, uh, again, the Western feel of everything. The the whole criminal underworld has always been something that's intrigued me about Star Wars as a whole. So the fact that this movie is kind of, you know, finally shedding a light onto that really just, it makes me happy. Seeing characters like, you know, there's... You see some of these characters. You see like the the the, merc- the tribal mercenaries or whatever whatever you want to call them at this point. And I don't know if they have an official name. I haven't caught that yet. Or you know even Beckett and you know I mean we see a large variety of you know characters you know already just from the trailer and it's just like their outfits you know and just what little you can tell their personalities definitely fits this atmosphere. I agree with you, you know, and I'm excited about, you know, Beckett for one example. I want to learn more about Beckett and, and maybe he's connected more throughout the galaxy because right now we don't, you know, he could be just in this specific region of the galaxy, mm-hmm. but he can also be like really yeah. well connected to like the underworld and Coruscant and he could be connected in, in Tatooine and along the Outer Rim. So, it, the, you know, the, um, the, the, trade mo- the trade line. So very interested to see what happens there with Beckett. Um, what I think is interesting, uh, you, want, you wanted to say something real quick? Yeah, well, to me, this is the first time that we actually kind of get hints that Beckett might be a space pirate because mm-hmm. they even refer to him as like a Long John Silver type character. Well, we know that um, Lawrence and his son John Kazan, who co-wrote this mm-hmm. script, they went back and reread Treasure Island before diving into the script writing process. Really? So I think that's really interesting. And that really supports what David is saying and what a lot of people are believing is we're going to get like space, like a true space pirate. Mm-hmm. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't Lando or Han referred to as a space pirate at some point in the original trilogy? Like, I think I remember uh, that. Lando to um, Han, you pirate or something. Yeah. Or, uh, uh, when when uh, Han the, lands on the and at Cloud City. At Bespin, yeah. Come here, you pirate. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So... I'm just saying, pirates have been referenced yeah. in the Star Wars mm-hmm. Galaxy before, and of course, if you watch Clone Wars, if you watch Rebels, you know, Hondo pirates are Hondo, mm-hmm. all them, right. Oh, so I would, I'd love series. to see Hondo on live, live screen. I want Cad Bane on screen, but that is a conversation for another time. If, sorry, you wanna, I, if you want to send us a, a tweet, a question about Cad Bane being in the movie, I'll put that on the show. I think it's dead. Stop it. You're pissing me off with that statement. Let's go ahead and keep going with this article. We, we get to learn a little bit about Val. 
Right, which we 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 don't know. We just see that one shot of her. About. We don't know anything about her so far. Danny Newton's article. character, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, really, even still, we don't know, but she's tied to Beckett. She's probably Beckett's number two is what I get out of this article. Um, but she's not impressed with Han Solo when she meets him. <laughs> and they specifically refer to him. She's not impressed with the Carillion pilot. Mm. So maybe that's kind of how they hook up, like Baby Driver, where uh, Kevin Spacey's character goes find... Uh, what's his name, baby, to be the driver for him. Maybe that's how they get hooked up. Do you think she's racist against Karelians? Like, are we going to have, like, racist stuff going on in the galaxy? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I don't know, like, on that level, because, I mean, it's, you've got humans that are the most, in the lore, the most... Humanoids, yeah. You know, humanoids mm-hmm. and everything, and humans are the most, uh, I don't know, they're... Of the, of the there. Of, if you had a pie percentage. chart, if you had a pie chart of the galaxy, humans make up the greatest, majority of yeah. the of, of the uh, the population of the galaxy compared I, to alien races. I think so. it's more of a trust issue because John Kazan even says she's a little skeptical of this kid. Mm-hmm. So obviously she's looking at him not as a professional pilot, but a rookie. Yeah, and she's more seasoned, and she doesn't know who yeah. this this new face is. And if and they're going to pull off some sort of space piracy job, maybe she wants a little more comfort knowing the job's going to go off without a hitch, as opposed to trusting this this kid. Dude, Paul Bettany, we know nothing about this character until now, but I remember getting that photo of him with uh, Ron Howard on set and thinking. He's literally one of my favorite comedic actors of all time. I cannot wait to see the role they put him in this movie. We get a better glance of maybe who that character is in Solo, um, talking about uh, goals. David, did anything stick out with you? He's sort of a combination of class and swagger and real danger, which uh, John Kasdan says will be a fun thing for us. And I wonder if that's going to be... You know, if, is he going to be an obstacle in Han's way, or is he going to be another character? You know, I, I, I'm wondering if he's going to be opposition, or is this another mentor that Han can latch onto and steal, you well, know, I personality mean, traits from? I, I think he's going to be the antagonist of the movie. Really? I think he's going to be the bad guy. Paul Bettany? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, even after talking about Beckett, even talking about um, Bicos or whatever that thing's name is, we're saying that... Paul Bettany's character actually has the potential to be... I think he will be the antagonist of the movie. Did, his his past really doesn't have him as the bad guy. Really? Does it? Does he play like... Because I know uh, his his background is in sci-fi. Oh, his uh, the, the actor's... No, uh, he's normally a good guy or a side character or right. a butler-type figure. I think the start. only time... Because, you know, he's you know a, a caring individual you know in the Avenger movies... Uh, where he plays Vision. I think back when he was in um, but maybe A Knight's Tale, he was kind of two-faced, but he eventually helped the, the lead cast. But maybe that's what they're going for. If they're looking for somebody who's going to be a villain of high class and swagger, maybe you need that person who's typically playing the proper, the mentor, the, the one who comes off to your face as... Isn't Paul Bettany being the protagonist a little of a curveball? Antagonist. Antagonist, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You because it... Didn't they write out a character, and they they write they wrote out one character, and they brought him in, and the rumor was that he was just going to be some side co- comedic relief. He's the baddie. They they got rid of um I, I'm blanking on the actor's name. I can see his face, like Williamson or something. They got rid of him. They bring in Paul Bettany, and he's not a side. He is the baddie. We, uh, Kazan says we've seen the sleazy take on a gangland chief with Job of the Hut. But Voss will uh, give us a, the handsome version of a figure who has found great success by breaking the rules, but isn't the kind to uh, to get his hands dirty. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I think that's going to be really good. Uh, and in case you can hear it, my neighbor decided that they're going to start vacuuming, so that's really exciting. Let's go on to the next topic in real talk. I think that was really great. Uh, a conversation about what Anthony Bresnikan gave us mm-hmm. in those Entertainment Weekly stories, and I look forward to seeing more. I'm sure Empire is going to drop something um, in the near future, and uh, we're going to have one more trailer for Solo, the trailer we're still waiting for, right? Because we got the teaser. We got the teaser trailer. There's one more that we're hoping to get before this Memorial Day release, so it'll be exciting to see that. 